Today we're going to be going over the pros and cons for the Samsung Q70T to help you decide if this is your product or if it's something you might want to pass on. So we're going to dive in with the pros first. So there are no screws required for the stand assembly if you are table topping. There is a crazy responsive feeling to game mode, so it basically feels like butter most of the time for you gamers out there wondering. For you enthusiasts out there, AutoCal is included on this display, so you can pull out extra image accuracy. Now, it is quantum dot, so you do have better color than a basic TV that doesn't have it. Um, they do have dual LED, so dual LED basically just gives you warmer tones leading to better white balance and things like that. Um, it is the most affordable HDMI 2.1 TV on the market right now today, and I think that's probably the biggest benefit for a lot of you gamers out there. Um, you know, I know a lot of these HDMI 2.1 TVs are excessively expensive, and this will be your most affordable option so far. Now, 2020 might have other or, or op options down the line, or you know, maybe even as we get further into 2021, but right now this is the most affordable option I've seen. Now, the Tizen operating system is really user friendly. You have fast source recognition. So basically when you plug in a USB or you know you do Bluetooth or HDMI connections, they're all recognized very fast. There's a separate power cable built into the television or not built into the television. Um, it's just like a separate AC adapter instead of the uh, built in like hard wired TV, like where if your cord goes bad, then you're screwed. I know models like the 950H, they have the built-in wire, and I do not like that because, again, if, you know, something ever happens to that wire, you're kind of up you-know-what creek without a paddle, and it's just not fun. Now, when you're talking about upscaling, it has solid performance, so you don't have to really struggle too much there. You know, older content is revitalized pretty nicely. You have Auto Motion Plus, which is basically soap opera affecting game mode without any of the added input lag. And I think that's really, really nice because traditionally you'd have to turn off all picture processing. Otherwise, you'd add some extra input lag depending on the manufacturer and things like that. But this is the best solution out there for responsive gaming, and I love it so much. Like, can't speak highly enough about Auto Motion Plus. Now, for you people that are table topping it, just keep in mind it is lightweight. So even if you decide to wall mount it later and you have a larger screen size, it won't matter because it's a really lightweight TV made of entirely plastic. So again, there's nothing heavy, no real metal components weighing down the TV. Again, very lightweight. Now it has an intelligent mode for easy access for most things. It's basically fully automated for people who don't really want to know the inner workings of the TV or ever have to dial it. They just want it to be all automated. Well, this is your TV for sure because it literally will do everything for you. Um, brightness controls, whatever you want, like sound. It has adaptive sound setups for your living arrangement. I mean, really, like you don't have to ever do anything but put it in auto and go. And I think that's also from a convenience standpoint really good for, again, consumers not expecting a whole lot but also not wanting to do a lot. Now, it does have surround sound for gaming mode and for gamers. So basically, if you want more three-dimensional sound out of the TV speakers, it does offer that for you, which again, to see that kind of technology at this price point is pretty impressive. But that does lead us to our cons now, and we're gonna talk about the fact that it doesn't have any local dimming and it's edulet. So that's a negative and definitely the most major downgrade from last year's Q70R. That TV was full array local dimming, and that's something to talk about when we are talking about viewer experience and, you know, upgrades or downgrades. Now, when we talk about the dual LED technology, I feel as though it is deceptive marketing. It definitely can deceive a lot of inexperienced customers to thinking they're buying something like the dual layer technology we've seen out of Hisense, or even the grid array backlighting system or slim backlight plus system we've seen out of Sony. So definitely be a little careful with that because that's not what this is. And uh, it's just basically two LEDs at different color temperatures, one for cool and one for warm light. And that's literally it. But it doesn't do anything for, you know, your overall black levels or anything like that. Now, when we're talking about colors, they are unimpressive compared to last year's already unimpressive Q70R. So if you were expecting game changing color to really take advantage of, I don't know, next generation consoles, for example, there are better TVs at even entry level price points like the Hisense line of quantum dot televisions. You definitely might want to check those out instead because they do better for color reproduction than this t television does. Now, when we're talking about clouding, 
that's a touchy topic for a lot of people. Some people don't care. Some people do. Either way, this TV does have clouding, and it is something that will lead to gray blacks, and it depends on your content. Um, you know, sometimes you can experience nice deep black, but then other times content will be blotchy with clouding, and it will be very distracting once you see it. It's the kind of defect and flaw that once you see it, you don't unsee it. There is noticeable dirty screen effect where you have blotching to the screen, basically when there are slow pans across the screen and gray uniformity is again, muddy and dirty. So this isn't exactly ideal, especially depending on the panel lottery um, for those hockey players or hockey uh, watchers out there, sports fans, this is not a sports TV. I would not recommend this for that. If you are a Dolby Vision fan, you are also let down. This TV does not have Dolby Vision. Instead, they opt in for HDR+, Plus, which is basically not supported at this point by most of the movies out there that you will find. And Blu-ray players that support it right now, I only know of the Panasonic UB420. So, you know, it's about $149 on sale and $200 regular price. But, you know, that's your only option there. But not great. When we're talking about HDR, they have weak brightness, they have subpar black levels, and that leads to an overall very weak HDR experience. So again, this is not going to be like a drop dead gorgeous HDR killer set. I think if you're looking for that, you might even actually be better going back a couple years to the 2018 Samsung Q7 FN if you can find it anywhere. The TV was well over 2000 nits. It was amazing for HDR content. And this TV is not on that level at all. You have definitely taken quite a few steps backwards through the years. Now they have what I call an anti-return clipless design. Basically they use straps to secure the box over you know, another box. And what happens is if you have any damage, any defects that warrant a return, you're going to have to use a load of packing tape to wrap around the box multiple times to hold the box on top. And it's really annoying. I can't stress enough how much of an inconvenience for you this will be. So just make sure if you're buying this display, you're aware that if you have any issues, you better have packing tape on hand because to return this thing is going to be a pain. Now, they do have forced terms of service for voice control, so voice control does not work offline. Sorry to give you that bad news there, but it is what it is. They do have a recycled design from last year, and also they have a recycled design in general from years prior. So there's no cutting edge, brand new design, even though you're paying full price for, yet again, a brand new TV. It's basically a ripoff of an old design. Now, they have mediocre motion at best. There's nothing fantastic about the performance of this motion, but it's not bad, and it will get you by. But it's definitely nothing to write home about, and you can find better at lower price points. Auto Cal, if you are an enthusiast calibrating your television, will lock your Cal Day and Cal Night. Preset options basically forcing you to manually override this in the service menu, and that is really inconvenient. Um, can't really stress how inconvenient that has been for me as a professional calibrator in my time working on TVs. Now, forced apps are basically being forced on your TV. And what I mean by that is Samsung's basically monetizing apps or third-party apps, marketing third-party apps to you on your television, and they don't care about your consent or anything like that. They're just going to market the third-party apps and get monetized you know, gratuities off of that. I think it's really dirty that they're getting paid to market apps on your TV. Nobody really calls them out like this, but I really think that this should stop. I, I don't know how it's legal that they can do that, but apparently there's something that is legal. Maybe they're too big to touch. Who knows? But essentially, it is a negative to talk about. Most of the manufacturers do do this, to be fair, but this is still something very disgusting that is a con of this display. Now, there is no voice control support offline, as I've mentioned. So again, that will limit a lot of your user experiences that they do advertise. So just keep that in mind again. Now they have an ugly matte finish design that's basically dull, ashy, and looks overall cheap. There's nothing fantastic about it, and it gives a general feeling of just being kind of entry level at best. Now for you legacy gamers out there, they don't have any legacy hookups for you, so if you have something like a PlayStation 2 or something else, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that stuff. And that's really a shame because they should be adding on to TVs as time goes on, but they're just taking stuff away, and that really sucks for us as consumers. 
There's still no One Connect box like found on the 2018 Samsung Q8FN, so that one invisible wire that made wall mounting really kind of seamless and you didn't see those ugly black wires down your TV, that's gone. You're not going to have that. If you wall mount, you will have that black wire down your TV and you will have to find alternate solutions to maybe route your wire behind your television through your wall or something like that. It's just really inconvenient. They're taking away things that really should not have been taken away that was very convenient. Now, they do have awful customer service, so I need you guys to keep in mind, if you have any problems whatsoever with Samsung, they will do everything in their power to make sure that you will not get a replacement of a brand new TV. So just be mindful of that. Um, they also come out with product crippling TV updates. So just look at their owner's forums on TVs like the Samsung Q9FN from 2018. They are destroying that TV right now quite substantially to push 8K in the newer televisions all after the fact. This is something that Samsung does and goes pretty unmentioned by most of the mainstream reporters, reviewers, and Amazon reviewers alike. So just keep that in mind, guys. Now, there also is no wide angle viewing filter. So if you were expecting that technology to be found on this model, unfortunately, you do have to step up into the Q80T before you see that, which makes you spend more money. Now, I'm just going to put it like this, guys. It's not put in a way of, I guess, deviance or malice, but Samsung as a company does do things that are anti-consumer and they also do things that are good to consumers as well. But now it's up to you to decide whether or not all of these things I've mentioned is basically worth your time or not, and if the Q70T is the product for you. Thank you guys so, so much for watching the number one brand in honesty, and until the next video, I'll see you guys later.